legs of this trip escaping Cincinnati with a 10 9 win Sunday tonight Chicago Southside it's an interleague matchup with the White Sox Joe Ross gets the ball in the opener on Masson. Side. Now we're on the south side of Chicago to take on the White Sox opener of a three game series at U.S. Cellular Field. Our fans will find us wherever we go around Major League Baseball. Some things have changed recently. Sox are struggling. The Nats are doing OK. And the last time we were here, John McLaren was the manager for one weekend. The Nationals were still a season and a half away from their first playoff appearance. And my, how things have changed in recent years. Things are going pretty well for the boys right now. They're 11 over 500, two and a half game lead over the Mets in the East. 19 road wins right up there with the best in baseball. They are pounding the ball. And even though it's not a hot night in Chicago, it as a rule plays pretty well as a hitter's ballpark. So after a day off, the pounding Nats are here in Chicago. Yeah, take that day off, new ballpark, see how it plays. Ball really carries to right center here. And right in the middle of everything is the catcher. Wilson Ramos, a guy we highlight. He just had a fantastic run over the last week or two. Did you know that a Buffalo can run up to 35 miles an hour? So I'm going to call this a stampede by Wilson Ramos. He's been absolutely on fire. You talk about the LASIK surgery he had in spring training. The awareness of strikes and balls. Last year, this is a guy that struck out 101 times. He leads all major league catchers with just 20 strikeouts this year. So you look at all the numbers for Wilson Ramos. The one that impresses me most is the strikeouts, Bobby. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand. He's making good decisions. His feet are slow. His head is still. He is one of the hottest hitters in baseball, leading catchers in all those categories you just saw. And maybe at times we don't give him enough credit for his defense. He's thrown out better than 30% of opposing base runners so far. Now the White Sox this year have spent 47 days in first place but since they have fallen the Royals now the Indians have risen in the AL Central so off to a great start but they're scuffling now they've lost three straight 10 of their last 12 18 of 24 and they're coming off a two and seven road trip so they're either due to turn this around or the Nats are catching them at the right time yeah and they do pitch in defense pretty well but then their big power guy Todd Frazier having a very unusual year you might call him a right handed Adam Dunn the way things are going a lot of home runs but a really low average but what you don't see in those numbers is the effect he's had in this clubhouse everybody to a man saying that Todd Frazier is one of the best guys you can have a clubhouse he's kind of changed the atmosphere down there you remember all the hubbub with Adam LaRoche and Drake LaRoche in spring training you talk to the White Sox people and they love their clubhouse. All star from Cincinnati now a White Sox guy and then there's Joe Ross for the Nats. He's been pitching well lately and pitching a little deeper his last couple of starts Matt Latos six and one and career against the Nats a lot of strikeouts and a record of four and two more on pitching straight ahead.
Cellular Field opened in 1991 after 81 years across the street at Old Comiskey Park. Bryce Harper to Chicago. Selfies, autographs, pictures, you name it. Bryce winning over the Windy City. The Nats are 19 and 12 on the road. Joe Ross gets the call tonight. Last couple of times out, FP, he has straightened out a little issue or two, and he's pitching really well, keeping the ball down. Too. Well, he leads the Nats rotation in ERA with a 2 3 7, 10th in the National League with that ERA, and he's second in the National League with a 1 5 4 road ERA, 2 and 1 in his last three starts. Joe Ross on fire, looking to continue here. Matt Latos. He's had a nice start for himself to the White Sox. Six and one, doing well. So we'll see. He's always had some ownage against the Nats. Four and two with a 2.53 ERA career and nine starts against the Washington Nationals. Yeah, he's six and one, getting some run support with an ERA of over four. So the Nats' offense really came alive in Cincinnati. Sunday, 10 runs on 14 hits. Second most runs this season. Coming up, the Nats and the Sox from Shy. on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you by Ocean City Maryland let us show you a good time in Ocean City Maryland book now at OCOcean.com and by Night Point Systems they offer the technology you need when you need it it's cool on the south side and we did welcome back to the newest dad on the ball club Ryan Zimmerman back he and Heather Two little girls now. Congratulations to the extended Zimmerman family as well. It is 66 in Chicago. Humidity down. So maybe the ballpark, which is one of the livelier in baseball when it comes to power, plays a little bit bigger tonight. There is a breeze blowing in off the lake from left center. Anthony Rendon likes interleague baseball. Over 300. Homers, RBIs, 47 ball games. And Bryce Harper, by the way, against the White Sox career, 6 for 11 with a homer three runs batted in so the lineup features Michael A. Taylor in center Jason Worth DHing. that's a good defensive outfield there with Revere Taylor and Harper and here comes 28 year old Matt Latos yeah last start May 31st against the Mets received the no decision gave up four runs on four hits over five innings of work struck out five walk three through 80 pitches so fastball slider curveball change he has a split for his out pitch the fastball average in 89 miles an hour and opponents Hitting 267 against the White Sox right-hander. White Sox pitching staff, by the way, the lowest DRA in the American League at 3.61. Now the lowest in the National League, the Cubs under three runs a game, and that's just a byproduct of power hitting ball clubs like Robin Ventura's and the DH. It's his third base coach, Joe McEwing, right next to him there. And about, they also have the number one rated defense, FB. Yeah, there it is. Well, least amount of errors when you talk to White Sox people. Not tons of range, but you see the outfield. Cabrera, Jackson, Eaton. Eaton can really throw in right field. Saldino, Frazier left side. Laurie Abreu right side. And Deanna Navarro behind the plate. Austin Jackson is back. 
He's been out for a week or so. Turf toe he suffered. That's an injury you don't hear a whole lot about anymore now that AstroTurf fields are pretty much gone. Most of his career with Detroit. Stops in Seattle and the north side of Chicago last year. Noki Cabrera is also back. He's in left field from family emergency leave. And the umpiring crew tonight, rookie umpire Nick Lentz has the plate. The crew chief Gary Cedars from there he is, 28 years. First base, Eric Cooper, 21 year veteran at second, 18 years in the big leagues for Jim Wolf over at third. So all the smoke from the fireworks blowing through the ballpark, all the pregame noise has quieted down, and we're ready for some baseball. The Nats are eighth in the league in hitting, ninth in runs, tied, at least going into today, with the Mets and the Cardinals with 76 home runs. Ben Revere facing Matt Latos for the first time. First pitch, a little low, and we're underway at 8:11 Eastern time. Todd Frazier's almost in the right-handed batter's box. How close he's playing to Ben Revere. Another one low, 2 0. Oh. Ben at a buck 67, but had a good day in Cincinnati. Base hits in the fourth inning and the sixth. Drove in a run, scored a run. And as it turned out, the Nats would need every one of those the way that crazy thing finished. There's your DH for the night. And Jason Worth has struggled against Lados in his career. Maybe he can do something about those numbers here tonight. Upstairs, three and one to Revere. Ben has walked seven times. That's on the outside edge. Always a big fan of leadoff hitters taking a 3 1 pitch to start the game. And I was about to say, you usually get the same pitch 3 1 as you get 3 2, but Latos just threw a 3 2 slider. Nats lead the all time series with the Sox 5 to 4. Two out of three here five years ago in that memorable weekend when Jim Riggleman had just. Walked away from the ball club and the Nats were about to hire Davy Johnson. John McLaren was the Nats manager for that weekend, taking two out of three here. And it was on to Anaheim and a new skipper in Davy. Pretty good at bat to start this game. Yeah, Dusty's got to like it. Seeing some pitches, making them work. Here comes pitch number eight. Upstairs, it becomes an even better AB as Ben Revere's aboard with Worth the DH coming in. That's Lato's 22nd walk. He's only struck out 31 in 56 innings. So the Nats are 7 and 2. They swept Minnesota, 2 out of 3 against the Tigers at home and the Royals on the road. And on the road again, three more here. We come home for six and then go out to the West Coast and make a stop in Milwaukee on the way back. Strikeouts, strikeouts per nine innings. National staff doing it all. Max Scherzer goes tomorrow night. Joe Ross right behind him. Worth is one for 15 career against Matt Latos. There's Bryce. Couple of hits, couple of RBIs career against the Chicago right hander. And Revere, two out of five stealing, diving back in. The Nats has a ball club, 28 steals, 43 attempts, that's seventh in the league. Small crowd gathered on a cool Tuesday evening. White Sox averaging 20,251 a game. That's 13th in the American League and 27th out of 30 teams in Major League Baseball. 
Worth reaching for that one. Double play ball. Frazier to Laurie. Brett Laurie turns it on the 5 4 3. Good to see Bryce Harper back in the middle of the offense on Sunday. Yeah, a little three for five. Got three hits in a row in three innings. In the fourth, a base hit. In the fifth, a little blooper to center field. And in the sixth, another base hit. So there's your three Bryce Harper hits. And anytime he's going the other way, he's getting real close. Scored two runs. I thought the reason he hit for such a high average last year and won the MVP was because he used the whole field. He had tons of hits to left field last year, center field. He was collecting hits, if you will. And the White Sox are shifted. Todd Frazier, the only man on the third base side. Shortstop Tyler Saladino moving toward the middle next to Eric Cooper. That is Italian for little salad. Pretty sure. One and two now. Matt Lato's career 70 and 56. 185th start. Bryce made an offer ball got away and everybody stops chasing the ball as soon as third base umpire said no swing Jim Wolf such a hard situation as a hitter you can't take off and run or you're admitting guilt yeah two two pitch. With two outs and Harper rips it to center. Coming in just a couple of steps, Austin Jackson. Lead off walk, double play ball. Bryce lines out. Ross goes to work. Outside of Chicago, the skyline in the distance to the north, tailgaters on a cloudy, cool evening here in Chi Town. White Sox are hitting 243, tenth in the American League, eleventh in runs, and in the bottom three in home runs. Brett Laurie, interleague career. He's always hit well, 320. 32 RBIs in 52 games. He's their second baseman, batting sixth. Been looking forward to seeing a ch getting a chance to see Jose Abreu play now for a couple of years. We'll see him shortly. Here's Joe Ross first time against the Sox. Yeah, last start the second time in a row he allowed just one earned run and went seven innings. Got the five to one win against Philly. Five strikeouts a couple walks 103 pitch effort. Fastball average 94 miles an hour last start. Slider change. To go with it. Leadoff man Adam Eaton. The White Sox got in a trade with the Diamondbacks for a couple of guys. December of 13. 
He's at 300, 287 his first two years here. And he's been hotter lately up to 270. 27 year old outfielder from Springfield, Ohio. Two oh pitch from Ross. Sixty and two thirds so far for Joe. Just 52 hits, 16 earned runs. Nearly a three to one strikeout to walk ratio. And a fastball whistles outside three and one. Well, if you had Joe Ross in the Nat starters ERA pool in the beginning of June leading it. <laughs> cha ching. Yeah, cha ching. 2.37 ERA coming in. That ball tails outside. He's got some movement on the heater. But now each starter has walked the opposing leadoff man. Here's your Nats defense for tonight. Outfield a little different. Ben Revere in left, Michael Taylor in center, Espinosa Rendon left side, Murphy Zimmerman right side, Wilson Ramos behind the plate. Here's Ryan Zimmerman back in ready for action at first. Yeah, when he left, he was nine for his last 20 with five RBIs in eight games. Here's Austin Jackson, 29 year old outfielder, just back from a toe injury. Ross up high. 259. He's hit 55 career home runs, known for a little bit of power and plenty of speed. He's on a four game hitting streak. And a really good one, eight for 16. Joe Ross continues to miss. Harness had adrenaline a little quick right now with everything kind of rushing out there. Doesn't have his release points, release point, excuse me, down yet. If he had release points, he'd be ambidextrous. Those would be tough to pick yeah. up. Which hand am I throwing it with? Guy for the A's, remember that? What's his name? Well, when I was with the Rangers many moons ago, Greg Harris, we had who could throw from either side. Yeah. Reliever. Mike Maddox was right handed. Two and oh. Eaton doesn't run a ton. And why should they run for now until Joe starts throwing some strikes? So you knew a visit from Ramos was coming. Danny Espinosa coming in as well. White Sox at home are 13 and 12. They have fallen to a third place tie with the Tigers. Three and a half behind the surging Cleveland Indians who've won six in a row. Second place Royals have lost five straight. So Robin Ventura's ball club 17 and 8 in April. 11 and 17 in May. Only one out of four so far in June. Up a bit in the zone, strike one. We're talking to Robin before the game today, and he was saying, Yeah, they've been struggling lately, but they got a lot of guys banged up. And he said something interesting, Carp. We always sit up here and wonder why managers do what they do. He wears it for the players. If there's a guy banged up or a guy hurt, a guy that's been in the training room all day, he's not going to tell the media that. He's just going to say, Hey, he'll be fine. Another walk. I think a lot of times. That's what a good manager does. He protects the player and he wears the heat. And right now there's a lot of heat on Robin Ventura. But if you're in that clubhouse or in that dugout playing for a guy like that, you love it. You know, you're scuffling as a player, you're banged up as a player, you're going out there playing hurt, and he's not letting the media know or the fans know. He's just wearing it and saying, hey, he's fine, he'll be all right. White Sox 76 and 86 last year. Fourth in the Central, 19 behind Kansas City. And here's Jose Abreu. 10 years in the Cuban National League. He hit 341 during those times, 30 home runs three times. This year, seven long balls, 30 RBIs. He's 29 years of age. Heating up a little bit recently, but his struggles this year have been well documented, kind of going out of the strike zone. He was a guy with tremendous strike zone knowledge last year. Yeah, first two years in the big league, 66 homers, 208 batted in. 
big swing. Ross had some sink at the end of it. Only two players in the history of baseball to go 30 and 100 their first two years. The guy you're looking yeah. at, Nelbert Pujols. Pretty impressive. Very impressive. Five for his last 12. That ball into left. Not hit that hard. Eaton scores easily. You walk two guys in an American League ballpark and you're asking for trouble, and the White Sox are on the board already. Probably want to bounce that slider, left it up just enough for Jose Abreu to dump it into left field. And just like that, Adam Eaton runs very well. Easy send for third base coach Joe McEwing. One nothing, White Sox. Now you're dealing with nobody out. Todd Frazier. In his Cincinnati career against the Nats. A 315 batting average with five home runs. And in my opinion, Todd Frazier has the coolest stance in baseball. It's just like he's standing on a street corner waiting for a cab, and then all of a sudden, watch when he lets it go. He doesn't get cheated. Just chilling. I mean, does this stance look relaxed or what? Another 2 0 count. Most home runs of any major league third baseman, 120 since the start of 2012. He was a first rounder by the Reds back in 07. Out of Rutgers. That's a quick bat, but not quick enough for 94. Nissan will track it. Yeah, I don't know that I've ever seen a Joe Ross game where I've put two walks down to start a game up. Maybe he's done it before. I don't remember it. Right now he's trying to get that fastball down just slow everything down a little bit. Looks like it's moving a little quick. That's a good looking 85. Some late break to it. One nothing Sox. Ross trying to retire his first hitter. And maybe get another out with it if he can get a ground ball that's chopped by Frazier. Actually swung and missed. Ball into the mid of Wilson Ramos. One out on a sinker boring in on the right hander. Yeah, pretty good arm side movement on this. Kind of runs in on Todd Frazier. He can't pull the barrel in. Elevated two above the belt. Big first out for Joe Ross. Maybe now you settle in a little bit. But you got a contact guy in Melky Cabrera. He doesn't miss too many pitches. Trying to get a ground ball, get out of this. Cabrera, 273 with 77 RBIs here last year. And a strike. Two eighty five career hitter. Thirty one years of age. This ball heading left field corner way and well out of play. Danny Espinosa keeping the runner Austin Jackson close at second. He can fly. And quite a pick on the backhand side by Wilson Ramos. 
Yeah, he's a glove guy back there. We talk about it all the time. Wilson Ramos always chooses to use the glove instead of his body and block it. That time it works nice. Nice pick. Base hit right field. Harper charging. Good runner coming home, and he'll be held up by Joe McEwing. And if he hadn't, Bryce Harper probably would have thrown Austin Jackson out. Mike Maddox is already on his way to the mound. Bases loaded, one out. I want to see the replay and what Joe McEwing did. The last time I looked, he was waving Austin Jackson. It, it, did Jackson slip or did he put on a late stop sign? I'm looking at Bryce Harper here thinking, well, if he sends him, he's out. There he goes. He put the late stop sign on. You see Jackson hitting the brakes. Good decision by Joe McEwing. Kind of hoping he was going to send him. <laughs> Five batters, three, actually two hits, two walks, a run already in. Next up will be the second baseman, Brett Laurie. Laurie runs well, too, so if you're thinking double play right here, it's got to be right at somebody because he can fly. Longtime Blue Jay last year with Oakland where he hit 260. He might be competing with a certain Mets outfielder for the Sporting Goods Store Award. Cespedes does not have a mouthpiece or glasses, so I'm going to give it to Lori. He got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. From Langley, British Columbia, highest drafted player ever out of Canada. And Ramos has to go out there and pick another one by Joe Ross that was really wild. This is like a boxer that's having a tough first round. You just want that bell to ring, go sit down in your corner and regroup. Joe Ross trying to get a ground ball, get out of this inning with minimal damage. It's been wobbled here early. One one. Evidently, that is swing and a miss, and it got away from Ramos. Kind of a funny sound when it made contact with Wilson. Yeah, I don't think he touched us at all. Wilson Ramos hustling after it. Yeah, he's not near it. And that's a thank you very much for swinging at that pitch. Maybe try to go even higher right here if you can. Base is loaded two and two. Target in. And a really defensive swing. The ball right in on his hands. Now he's gone to three and two. Joe Ross in the first inning with one out is nearing 30 pitches. Swing and a miss. 
two huge strikeouts to Frazier for the first. Laurie for the second. Well, that's the case of Brett Laurie being a little too excited about this baseball game. You look at pitch track, he barely threw one strike. So Joe Ross wobbling a little bit. He makes a big pitch right here. Laurie all in on a 3 2 fastball, gets a slider. So big pitch, big sequence. Next up, the DH, JB Shuck. Nat saw him a few years ago with Houston. He just got called up recently. Only three hits, his first 23 at bats. Jack Burdett Shuck out of Westerville, Ohio. White Sox got him off waivers from Cleveland last December, split last year. Actually, two years ago between the Angels and the Indians, White Sox picked him up. Austin Jackson walked after Eaton did. He has already scored. Abreu had an RBI single. And after Frazier struck out, Cabrera base hit to right. Now, White Sox started the season pretty hot offensively. Now they're Winning percentage is down, their runs down. Jeep shows you though they're still pitching and playing defense. That's ball three. It's just weird. You don't see this with Joe Ross. He's a guy that from day one has been fearless, pound the strike zone. A lot like he's trying to throw balls right here, but something's out of whack with his mechanics. Having trouble repeating them here in the first. Two nothing Chicago. I mean the last thing you think about when you think of Joe Ross is wild. The last thing. I mean if anything in his career is as good as he's been. Early. It's that he throws too many strikes and guys go up there with the fastball slider combination and they're aggressive they get a strike because they know they're going to get a strike so this is. Way out of character for Joe Ross. 32 year old veteran catcher Deano Navarro steps in. That said if he can get out of this first with just two runs he's okay. Gets the call on the high strike. Joe Ross has never walked more than two batters in a game until tonight. At least this season. Maybe trying to simplify it with the bases loaded out of the stretch. A lot of times in the windup, you got so much going on, and when you're in emergency mode right now, deciding to go out of the stretch with the bases loaded. On the shift, Murphy and right, Espinosa right up the middle.
healthy hack that was by Navarro who's hit nearly 280 the last month. Espinosa on the shift right up the middle. A 6 3. Ross and the Nats out of a very long inning, nearly 40 pitches. White Sox have a couple, but the Nats have Daniel Murphy. Daniel Murphy with a big home run on Sunday. It was his second at bat. He lined out to left field the first time up and then got all of this one an absolute bomb to the upper part of the bleachers in right field. That was a definite see you later. 405 feet it said. Look a little further than that to me. Well, as you say, the stadium stopped it. Yeah. The Jeep inside the numbers on Daniel Murphy, who still leads. All of baseball batting 384. So right now in the voting, he's second best. And you know those Cup fans are going to go crazy trying to get as many of their guys as they can in San Diego. Neil Walker off to a great start with the Mets as well, the guy who replaced Daniel Murphy in New York. So that's the voting order. Mets, by the way, lost the first of two at Pittsburgh. At last report, trailing in the nightcap. Nets could gain a game and a half on New York if they can come back and win this one. And the Pir Pirates drop the Mets a couple of times. Murphy seven for 19 career against Matt Latos. You don't put Trey Turner in that graphic. He's in a thousand. <laughs> one game, second base, a thousand. Now a 3 0 count to the Nats leadoff man. Leto's walking to center field to regroup after that pitch. Murphy taking all the way. He's a hard guy to walk. That's only the 11th all year and here's Dan. Bob Wilson Ramos stepping in for the first time today. Wilson's been tremendous offensively in a number of different categories this season. I asked him the other day whether he has any specific offensive goals that he's setting for himself this year. He said he'd really like to hit 300 and he's off to a great start coming into today hitting 350. He said he also has seen himself as a 20 home run guy. He knows that he can get to that mark already with eight long balls on the season. The strikeouts are down. The power is up. The on base percentage up as well. It's been a great start for Wilson Ramos. He's really pleased with how he's been swinging it offensively. Yeah, 15 home runs last year. 68 RBIs, number two to Buster Posey among catchers. Ramos also hit 15. 
back in his first full season with the Nats at 11 and had 16 two years later. So Dan with our Coons.com sideline report over two million vehicles sold and counting. Ramos three for nine against Latos. He got jammed to right field line and a couple of feet foul. Latos first inning 16 pitches 10 strikes. I just think he's so relaxed at the plate. His feet are so slow his head is still the confidence you can just see growing on a daily basis with Wilson. And now he's hitting. Fifth you know he did a lot of this damage hitting seventh with an eight hole hitter hitting behind him that hadn't hit for average yet and a pitcher. Oh two Ramos to right this one playable Adam Eaton over there. Crossing the line right after the catch one out in my favorite stat I didn't want to say it no two count of Wilson Ramos has only struck out 20 times this year. That's a guy that struck out 101 times last year so he's putting the ball in play on a consistent basis and being rewarded for it. I love his two strike approach. Next up Ryan Zimmerman we welcome Ryan back. And as mentioned in eight ball games before the paternity leave. Nine for 20, two homers, five RBIs. Four career hits, including a homer, and three walks against Matt Latos. I think I can count the times on one hand that in six years I've seen Ryan Zimmerman swing at the first pitch in his first at bat. He's a guy that likes to gather information first time up, see a lot of pitches, see the release point rotation. He tells me if he comes up second time with the bases loaded, he wants to know everything a pitcher has mm -hmm. on that day, even if he's faced him a bunch of times because it changes. And, you know, we'll see him third or fourth time up go ambush and swing at the first pitch, but. That was odd right there swinging at the very first pitch he saw today you don't see him do that. Short lead by Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Eating some dirt as he dives back in at Jose Abreu wasn't even on the bag for that throw. He doesn't do anything halfway. Nope. I feel like if Daniel Murphy wasn't a baseball player, he'd be working in a steel mill. It's kind of player he is, right? Hard hat, lunch pail, thermos, go to work. Work as hard as you can for as long as you can, then go home and sleep hard. Brings it every day, doesn't he? Yeah, and he'd be the foreman yeah. before too much time went by. He's running. Pitch outside. Navarro never made the connection from the mitt to the hand, and Daniel Murphy is two for four this year. Well, I like to see Daniel Murphy run. If you're going to lead the league in throwovers, you got to steal once in a while. Seems like every team throws over at least a couple of times with Daniel Murphy, and because he, he's an ambush guy, if, if you don't pay attention to him, he'll go. But that time he had a throw over and went and stole it easy. Three two to Ryan, and Zimmerman will take the Nats' third walk. Strikes optional game. Six walks already. Anthony Rendon is next. Not going anywhere. <laughs> this might be a Snickers game, Garb. Four, four plus. Yeah. Joe Ross gonna figure it out. Not worry about that. 
This is exactly what he needs. And anywhere he can sit there and figure it out. Yeah, Robin Ventura and his pitching coach Don Cooper can't be pleased with what Matt Lados has just done twice. So here's Rendon 0 for 1 with a walk career against the right hander. He goes up hacking. That ball's in the right field corner, and it is going to take a couple of hops to the 335 mark. Murphy scores. Zimmerman stops at third, and Anthony Rendon slices the Nats right back into this game. RBI number 18. It's one of those deals where if you swing at the first pitch after a couple of walks, you're looking for it in your zone. And Anthony Rendon, Tony Two Bags, comes through in a big way. That just sliced away from Adam Eaton, a guy that covers a lot of ground in right field. He's played gold glove right field for the first two months for the White Sox. So nice at bat by Anthony Rendon. Line moving here in the second. Good base running by Ryan Zimmerman. He read that all the way and actually had a chance to score. Now the challenge for the next two batters here. Especially the first man contact second and third one out. Andy Espinosa takes a pitch up high and for the second time Navarro <laughs> who was at least going to threaten the throw to third never got it in his hand. Espinosa 10 plate appearances against Leto's career a base hit three walks. I think if you're Danny Espinosa, he's always got that base hit bunt in his back pocket, but right now you're thinking about driving in two runs. Crowd getting a little antsy here. Yeah, Brett Laurie playing well back at second. Lados not exactly cat like off the mound. But it's a hitter's count here at 2 and 0. Chopper right side, Zimmerman coming home to tie the game as Danny Espinosa grounds out to Brett Laurie. So just like that, the deficit erased. And for Danny, his 23rd batted in. Yeah, good at bat. Got the run in, tied the game. Good answer. High fives everywhere. Welcome back, Dad. Got to touch home plate. Now he's in the dugout with his teammates. Yeah, now light up a cigar. <laughs> Here's Taylor. Runner at third. He was thinking about bunting for a hit. Frazier coming in from third base. Michael has faced Latos twice, 0 for 1 with a base on balls. I think Joe Ross is a little off in the first because he's not hitting tonight. He loves to hit. One and two, Taylor to the left side. On the move, Saladino with a one handed pickup. So the Nats come right back to tie it. RBIs by Rendon, the double, and Espinosa, the ground ball.
to bring your Cabbage Patch kids. Maybe you dress up like the church lady. It's 80s night at Nats Park, Friday, June 10th. First 20,000 fans, you receive a Nats fanny pack. The leg warmers will be there in concert. For more information and purchase ticket, visit nationals.com slash 80s night. You remember when all the Nats rookies dressed up like the Smurfs? That would fit for 80s night. Yeah, that was quite a scene walking through Penn Station in New York <laughs> that night. <laughs> Steven Strasburg was Papa Smurf. Michael Morse had the boombox playing the Smurfs theme song. They hired a lady to spray paint them all blue in the clubhouse. <laughs> it was great. Tyler Saladino. And by the way, Joe Ross had three games last season when he walked three or more. Most ever against St. Louis had a six walk game four against the Dodgers. That's history and hopefully the walks are for the rest of the night as well as Saladino steps in 26 year old infielder from San Diego seventh rounder by the White Sox six years ago out of Oral Roberts University a swing and a miss on a ball outside to him and Ross third strikeout. Mercedes Benz will track it. So three pitch see ya. you felt like just get to the corner get to your cut man. A little Vaseline on your face maybe a squirt of water into the water bucket you're good. It's good. Filling up the strike zone now. Here's the guy he walked to lead off the first Adam Eaton. I think Todd Frazier has me doing all these boxing references. Pretty sure that's the reason. Blame it on him. Did I, if he falls at all in this series, I will say down goes Frazier three times. <laughs> I'm waiting. I got it locked and loaded. I would pay to see Todd Frazier against a young Ray Knight, who is a Golden Gloves boxer himself. Something about Red's third baseman, huh? Yeah. Now here in Chicago, of course. Eaton leads the American League with 15 infield hits this year. So he's a guy that likes to bump the ball around and use his speed. Joe's got him in the hole one and two. Thirty nine pitches 19 strikes first inning. But he only gave up two singles. And his teammates rewarded him immediately. In the air left side and over the White Sox dugout. We're getting a foul ball this series. I'm calling it right now. We are close and we are low here yeah. at USO. That's a great field. view we have here. We're almost my level of the game. This is has to be the lowest booth we're in. What a great view. Yeah, lowest so far this year. You don't need your binoculars here at all. That's the camera that's just to the right of us in our booth up here. One ball, two strikes. Hit that hit him. That was a breaking ball, diving down and in. And on a one and two count, Joe Ross hits Adam Eaton. Well, he's kind of been yanking that slider early in the game, pulling it across. Maybe trying to overthrow it. Got Adam Eaton in the toe. Seven time he's been hit by a pitch this year. So another guy who does Danny Espinosa visiting with Joe Ross bottom of the second here in Chicago into the nine o'clock hour back home for you folks already. Good to be back with you after an off day on Monday <laughs> and that cardiac game in Cincinnati on Sunday before that. Well you put that ninth inning together with the first inning here tonight. Too many base runners. Jackson walked his first time. Eaton stealing five out of seven. White Sox ninth in the league with 25 stolen bases. Nick Lentz thought about it a moment, called it a strike. Just watching Adam Eaton at first base, he's a rhythm guy. What's that mean? Well, he's kind of inching off, inching off, trying to in rhythm 
keep moving towards second in little tiny steps and as Joe Ross picks up his foot just kind of continue that to start a steal. He starts off real short and then just kind of inches out inches out trying to get that rhythm with the pitcher and go. And if you can sink it up that's when you steal a base. You're kind of creeping 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 and as he lifts up his foot you go. It's almost like getting. A running start start so to speak. Just got to watch out for a quick move. Oh two with one out. Trying to time it see that. Yeah Ross really holding it a long time. Jackson never did ask for time and that fastball didn't miss by much. And if you can see that in your Joe Ross out of the corner of your eye he hops out there one step you snap throw you got him. I mean you could pick off at him eating if he does one of those hops. Remember Roger Bernardino used to do that all the time. Yeah. The shark used to jump out there and almost get picked off and at times he did. Just kind of got to look out of your left eye and see if he does one of those big hops that's when you throw over. He's not doing it here. Two's wild. Look at the look at the scoreboard. Jackson, the number two hitter in their lineup, swinging a foul straight back. Fifty-three pitches to get four outs. That's way too many. He's not going to have a long night. Unless things change. Yeah, and the other thing, you know, we we are playing with the DH tonight, so you you don't have to make that. Pinch hitter for the pitcher decision. Couple ground balls, double plays. What am I thinking? Little liner out to right center. Eaton puts his head down and goes to third. He wasn't fooled by the Murphy Deke when Daniel acted like he was going to catch the ball and throw to first. And the White Sox have runners at the corners with one out. Third hit. Yeah, nice inside out swing by Austin Jackson. That sinker's chasing him, and he just gets enough of it to throw it over Daniel Murphy's head. Adam Eaton, who's a great base runner, knows it's dropping all the way. Easy first to third. Now Joe Ross pitching for a strikeout against Jose Abreu. And yeah, Abreu didn't hit the ball hard first time, but he did line it to left to drive in their first run. That's the book on a Bray. You pound him in, make him aware of that fastball for a strike in, then that opens up the slider away, which he has a tendency to expand the zone. He'd been trying to cover two, three inches off the plate on both sides this year. That's been his biggest problem. Right there, see that first pitch set up that. Might have been the best slider, too, for Joe. Watch, it starts as a strike and it just hangs a left. One one pitch to right. Harper trying to get behind the ball but just no way to do that for a strong throw and he was 300 feet away anyway. Eaton scores easily the White Sox back on top three two. Two RBIs for Abreu 32 on the season. Well the last time we saw Jose Abreu play he had a sack fly against the Mets to win the ball game. Only difference was he scored Matt Alberts, their pitcher, who doubled in the gap, went to third on a wild pitch, and then scored on an Abreu sack fly. They showed it on the video screen here before the game, and they played chariots of fires. They showed Alberts running around the bases against the Mets. Yeah. 
It was reminiscent of the opening scene of Chariots of Fire. <laughs> Guys running in sand in slow motion. <laughs> It was some kind of day for him though to beat the Mets in that extra inning game. Whoa, that's high and tight to Todd Frazier. But he didn't go down. <laughs> I was I was so ready. I would think with that relaxed stance he's kind of hard to hit. Stands well off the plate. That's a great take on a slider that was similar to the one on which Abreu bit. Todd Frazier, Tom's River, New Jersey. Most outstanding player in their Little League World Series team. He was originally drafted by the Rockies but didn't sign. 37th round ended up going to Rutgers and became a first rounder taken by the Reds back in 07. Couple of All Star games, including last year in his hometown, that memorable home run derby performance. Hit 35 home runs for the Reds last year. It was a three team, seven player deal between the Reds, Dodgers, and White Sox that sent Frazier here. Time requested and given prior to the pitch, so it stays 2 0. All that said, the tremendous resume of Todd Frazier, if you went to Grant Park here in Chicago and watched a softball game on a Saturday afternoon, you might see this dance. Yeah. I'm going to stand here and hit one a mile. Let's hope not in this situation. Nat's already down again. He is really seeing that slider of Joe Ross. Those were two pretty good pitches. Well, when you have a guy carved that's struggling with command as a hitter, it takes away your aggressiveness. You want to make him throw strikes. If you have a guy that's known for filling up the strike zone, he's having an off night. There's no need for me as a veteran hitter to be aggressive with him. I have a good chance of getting into account if I'm patient. He hits that ball a ton to center. Taylor going back and gone. Todd Frazier is 19th of the year and the White Sox lead five to two in the second inning. So to my point exactly if you have a guy that's struggling throwing strikes there's no need to go up there hunting pitches early in the count. There's a good chance. That if you take a few pitches, you might get into a good count, and there's no better count to hit in for a power guy than 3 0. Todd Frazier with the green light, 19th homer of the year, puts his ball club up by 30. This could be one of them slugfest, folks. This is far from over. Todd Frazier with 42 RBIs. Melky Cabrera base it to right field his first time. Well, this inning was going okay. Joe struck out Saladino. He had eaten one and two when he hit him in the foot with a breaking ball. And from there, bang, 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 three runs. Swing and a miss on a slider. Ramos tags out the hitter. Two really long innings for Joe. Top of the order ahead for the Nats. It's 5 2 after 2 on what will be a long night in Chicago.
to two White Sox on a three run home run off the bat of Todd Frazier. Get an entire month of home games for just 50 bucks with Nats Pass, the newest way to enjoy Nats baseball. Catch every game in June in standing room areas of Nats Park for just 50 bucks. Phillies, Cubs, Mets, Reds all come to town. Visit nationals.com slash Nats Pass for all the details. To the third. Ben Rivera walked first time. Then erased on a 5 4 3 double play ball off the bat of Jason Worth. Matt Lato's not exactly a sterling start to his evening. 37 pitches, 20 strikes, first two innings. Two runs on a hit and three walks. I think Rugnet Odor's got some competition. Do you see Manny Machado tonight? Charge the mound. Jordano Ventura hit him, threw at him earlier, then drilled him, and he went out to the mound and got him. Mm. And Revere on a 3 1 pitch, a chopper to second. One out. I mean, it's a good right hook talking about boxing. Maybe that's why I was using those references. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do to protect yourself. The guy going to throw 100 at you. Jason Worth. They're going to pull a Brayu about 25 feet off the first baseline, put Laurie nearly up the middle. Jason takes a strike. Saladino in a pull position at short. Make a pitcher a few years back cover up his arm with a sleeve because of his tattoos so that it was distracting to the hitter. Yeah, I think you're right. Look at that thing drop in. 77 miles an hour on a 2 2 curveball. Nissan will try to track it. That dropped in is called perfectly. It's exactly what it did. Locked up Jason Orth. Couldn't pull the trigger. Here's Bryce Harper who hit the ball first time hard. Line drive right at Austin Jackson, the center fielder. Felt so good he threw it again. Well you got to sit soft right now if you're a Nats hitter he's not really throwing the fastball for strikes or commanding the heater so what is he doing he's going to his off speed stuff curveball slider change up. Stay back, think about using the whole field going the other way. Another off speed pitch. Yeah, bouncing way out in front. Sixteen pitches first inning. And then twenty one in the second when he walked two batters. Yeah, definitely pitching backwards. Fastball late, off speed early. 
fallen into a pattern. Three and two with the best hit man in baseball on deck. Don't say hit man too loud. We're on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> That's a different meaning around here. Three, two. Harper pops one up left side into the twilight. The light standards are really high here because the grandstand is really high. No problem for Frazier. The Nets down by three. To you by Team Mobile, Michael Fulmer of Detroit. He's got it going now. It's going to be uh, the equivalent of about two and a half games here with the scoreless innings. Mookie Betts, remember him? Took a home run away from Bryce at Fenway last year. He is scoring like crazy for that high octane offense. And the Texas Rangers dominating the Houston Astros in the AL West. One of the reasons Houston is three games under 500, and the Rangers are 13 over. Fulmer's deal in 23 years old. They got him in the Cespedes trade. Good looking young pitcher. He pitched against the Nats, but he's really improved since they faced him. First pitch, bottom of the third, Brett Laurie. And Michael A. Taylor was playing him a bit toward right center. Didn't have far to go for that one. Next up, the DH. JB Shuck. He drew the bases loaded walk first time. Well, if you're Joe Ross, just we said this about Geo the other night. Keep it right there and hope your ball club can slug back into this ball game and in this ballpark against Matt Latos. You're thinking they got a chance. Yeah, he's throwing 65 pitches in three innings. That's a nasty slider diving down and in on the left handed batter. Two quick outs. Joe Ross, fourth strikeout, actually fifth. 
I'm going to three pitch C it right underneath the hands thinking about the heater didn't pick up the slider. Out front on top late break nice pitch. Deanna Navarro. Hit kind of a side spinning one hopper to Danny Espinosa right where Danny is now up the middle on the shift. That ended that long first inning. Yeah, if a guy turns around his evening in the American League, he can pitch longer than he can in a National League game because you don't have to worry about hitting for him. Taylor, he's going to outrun the baseball. Michael A. Taylor to the gap in left center. That's impressive. Well, that ball was tailing away from Michael A. Taylor. Got on his horse, got a good jump, fully extended. And you said it perfectly. He outran the baseball. Nice play. Just shows you what he's all about. Got a great jump, long strider, the ball tailing away. He's playing on that side of second base, but you saw the anticipation and the lean actually toward left center. Fully extended, the ball tailing back toward left field. So that ball going away from Michael A. Taylor and Joe Ross appreciating the effort. Great play by Taylor. And maybe that's a momentum changer. We'll see. Brilliant. As a center fielder when you're looking into home plate and you see the catcher setting up away to a lefty sometimes you start to get sort of a lean going toward left center field because you're anticipating the pitch hitting the spot and you know that if the left hander swings the only thing you can do is hit it to the left so you start to your weight starts to shift even before the swing sometimes you get tricked that way they go out and pull a pitch but more times than not as a center fielder you get a good jump doing just that. No swing on a ball in the dirt. Daniel Murphy. Fourth inning underway. Breathtaking speed and defensive ability by Michael A. Taylor. Boy, Daniel Murphy's dying to swing. He hasn't seen a strike yet tonight. At least not swinging. Two hopper with some pace on it to Brett Laurie. One out, top of the fourth. P Nats back in town June 9th to the 12th. Tons of great giveaways and promotions, and you get to see some pretty good baseball too. For information, call the number on your screen or go to PotomacNationals.com. Wilson Ramos fly ball to right first time.
He almost doubled down the line. On a foul ball a couple of pitches before he fouled out or rather flew out. And then Rendon painted the corner with an RBI double. That's upstairs to Wilson. Two balls no strikes. Ramos rips one to left left center field playing way off the line Cabrera. And Wilson Ramos is now 13 for his last 25. Well I forgot to say it with the anti Rendon so there goes the one hitter. And maybe tonight's my fault. I'll blame it on myself. Buffalo stampede continues. Leads all catchers in average on base percentage, slugging percentage, fewest K's. And hopefully a free trip to San Diego during the All-Star break. So that's up in the zone for a strike. Ryan Walk first time up. Had gone up hacking at the first pitch. Going the other way. Great stop by Laurie. And he throws out Ryan Zimmerman. Kind of a crazy offensive game so far, but. Now we're seeing some outstanding defense. Well, Laurie's a guy that plays with his hair on fire every single night, so for him, diving is fun, and he takes a hit away from Ryan Zimmerman, who, by the way, I saw this today, is eighth in all of baseball in hard hit rate at 23.5% of his at bats. The ball's hit hard, so another hang with him for Ryan Zimmerman. He hit it well. Ramos in scoring position for Rendon doubled the other way first time up. You know his number one big poppy twenty nine point seven percent of the balls he hit are hard. Victor Still, huh? Victor Martinez number two and Manny Machado number three Cespedes is four. So that's some pretty good company for Ryan Zimmerman. And Manny Machado made it into another category with a hard hit tonight. It was. Ventura hits everybody. I mean, you, in an American League, when you don't hit, there's no repercussion. It's very easy just to drill people because you never hit. So you see that a lot in, in, in American League games. And I'm sorry, if a guy's throwing 100 and he hits you, you have to protect yourself as a hitter. You do. Or it just keeps happening. You just roll over, belly up, and it keeps happening. You can't do that. Not condoning fighting, but I mean, he was thrown at his first time up, got thrown at, got hit a second time. You got to do something about it. Sorry. It's old school, and I love it. And Manny Machado is one of my favorite players. I think he's one of the best, or if not the best player in baseball. Love the way he plays. Rendon, last 25 games, now batting over 340. And he goes left field with this one and it is see you later just out of here and Anthony Rendon has a pair of extra base hits and now it's a 5 4 ball game. That's his sixth of the year. I mean the way Cabrera stood there you thought it was going 10 rows up and it almost stayed in. Well we've only seen three games here and it was in 2011 you're told what. A band box this place is and when Melky Cabrera just stood there I thought Anthony Rendon lined out to left field it's twilight you lost the ball in the lights. And the way it stands it's his sixth home run of the year and it's a five to four game you want to slug we'll slug. Three RBI night Rendon now is driven in 20. Here's Espinosa. 
I've just never seen a fielder freeze on a ball that hit either off the top of the wall or just beyond it. Three hundred and seventy four feet ninety six miles an hour. Oh, I've got the distance look at that. Did you see that. I like it. That's so big league. Well, Spinoza healthy hack to even the count one one. Only thing is I can't make up the distances anymore so that kind of stinks. Nationals 77th home run of the year started the day tied with the Mets and St. Louis. In that nightcap by the way seventh inning at Pittsburgh three one Pirates trying to sweep the Mets by identical scores. Let's watch the homer again. I don't care what you saw this was five hundred and twelve feet. Ooh, look at him stay through that went down and dug it out. And you're getting an idea how this ballpark plays folks. The third park on this trip. It is good to hit the long ball in. First Philly, then Cincinnati, now Chicago. Good take by Danny. When the Nats started this trip, they had 64 home runs. They now have 77. Then we kind of had that feeling. They were heating up. Nats Park was heating up. The ball was traveling before they left. So staying hot. And now 27 homers in the last 13 ball games. Espinosa broken bat, and to the shortstop Tyler Saladino. One out hit by Ramos. Two out line drive homer. Anthony Rendon. He's up to 20 RBIs now. It's a 5-4 slugfest in Chicago. Brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. So, twilight time falling over Chicago here. Anthony Rendon has gone deep. Bottom of the fourth, Tyler Saladino for the White Sox. Joe Ross ball one 73rd pitch but he had a seven pitch seven strike one two three third inning. That breaking ball was hanging and fortunately for the Nats Saladino out ahead too far. He didn't even give me the fake TV laugh on Saladino being Italian for a little salad. <laughs> Crickets. Now that was that was a sincere laugh just there. <laughs> He's got good facial hair too. 
digging it. Tyler Saladino from San Diego. Went to Palomar College. Then Oral Roberts University. White Sox seventh rounder back in 2010. 225 in his big league debut 68 games last year. Fly ball to right. I think that ended up a little further than Bryce Harper initially thought and us as well. So it's supposed to be warmer here tomorrow night. That may tell the tale on what kind of ballpark this really is. We just don't get to see it much at all. It's kind of a different yard. When this ballpark went up in 91 it was the first baseball only stadium to be built in the major league since Royal Stadium back in the early 70s everybody was still building multi purpose stadiums right before this thing went up the White Sox were all but gone to St. Petersburg Florida and at the 11th hour the Illinois legislature approved money for a ballpark and they threw this thing up in a hurry Rendon to Zimmerman two quick outs well the ball travels here when you talk to the White Sox people that tell you the wind blows in check this out this is cool from wow. center field it kind of swirls around home plate and then goes out this way. So that's where the jet stream is here. You saw Todd Frazier's home run. It travels everywhere here, but that's kind of on a warm day what happens. So it gets that kind of whip around effect behind home yeah. plate and shoots out to right. Outfield slightly asymmetrical, 335 right field corner, 330 left field. Uniform eight foot wall runs all the way around the outfield. Austin Jackson a walk a single two runs scored been dying to use that stretchy air that thing so that worked nice very nice thank you you don't have a swirl function I'm looking I got all kinds of things I, think I could launch a spaceship on our telestrator tonight but no no Way inside, back up slider it appeared. Would you say it's like giving an arsonist gasoline before the game with a flamethrower? Flame As a giving up, Pete, that thing is like giving an arsonist a flamethrower. Yeah. I won't overuse it, I promise. All right, it's fun. 2 2. A telestrator that works. Yeah, it's awesome. And you get some runs, you get back in the game, it gives you new life as a pitcher. Yeah. National League game, he would be due up in the fifth, and you'd have to hit for him, maybe. Now that it's 5 4, maybe. Fastball didn't miss by much. Austin Jackson now has a five game hitting streak, nine for his last 17. But we show you the pitches on the score thing down there. But just like umpires now, how I say their calls are just a suggestion with replay review, but the pitch count is just a suggestion with Dusty Baker. He, he can let you pitch if it's your day. I don't really even pay attention to it so much as you pay attention to how he's doing, how his stuff is. That's ball up. We've been so conditioned to once you get to 100 pitches, you're out of the game. But with Dusty Baker, we've seen that's not the case. It's walk number four by Joe. Now Jose Abreu, who has driven in two, with a single to left and a sacrifice fly to right. Slider and the ball with a funny spin on it as Ryan Zimmerman picks it up.
way ahead expand the zone see if he'll go with you. Yeah big power guy on deck you'd love the inning to end right here. Abreu and Frazier have driven in four between them. Another good pick by Wilson Ramos. Five four ball game, bottom of the fourth. Five four oh Sox, four three oh Nats. Abreu's last four years in Cuba, he hit 399, 453, 394, and 345. Timeout, 453. 2011. I double checked it myself when I saw it. I don't think they were pitching underhand that year. Oh, he can hit. The 453 is ridiculous. I don't care where you're playing. Tough to get the ball by him right now. Slightly closed stance. We were talking about that the other day. Don't see that too much anymore. Rendon there to grab it. Wow. What a shot. But for Joe Ross and the Nats, all that matters, there's a zero on the board, and to the top of the fifth we go. One run game. As we go quickly into the top of the fifth, Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. Joe Ross had something to smile about when his center fielder got on his horse and absolutely robbed Yonner Navarro of extra bases. Great effort, great play, fully stretched out. Joe Ross digging it, Anthony Rendon with the Nucks, and Michael A. Taylor trying to do something at the plate now, just like he did in center field. Something spectacular. Let's see. Bouncing ball to short first time. Curbolt ending up, I guess it was a slider 85 right at the end of his bat. I think Dan's almost got hit a few times tonight.
a good take gets the count in his two and one favor. I feel like if you just stand up there tonight as a Nats hitter, you can be two one. Matt Latos is trying to get you to chase his off speed that looks like strikes that never really ends up as a strike. A curveball to Jason Worth comes to mind, but other than that. Came into this inning with 72 pitches and starts off Taylor, the number nine hitter, with a full count here. Revere and Worth. Got a pitch up. Michael A. Taylor got all of that baby into left field. So here comes Revere, Worth, maybe Harper. Top of the order, top of the fifth. Fourth base hit for Washington. He got that curveball. He just missed a few of them. You see him roll his wrist right there and get on top. Nice swing. Watch him get on top of that curveball. Low line drive to left. So a leadoff single here in the fifth. Down by one. You got wheels on first. I wonder if Ben Rivera's thinking about Button right here. Well, if he does, he may want to take one with him. Frazier shallow at third. Right-handed throwing pitcher. And Taylor just started running. Then he stopped. Rundown continues. Taking off way too early. Another base running problem for Michael A. Taylor. There have been a few lately. Yeah, just leaves way too soon. Maybe he thought he had a rhythm with Matt Latos counting with him, but he was only out there. Well, not even for a pitch, so that's unless he studied something on video and thought he had a rhythm on him, maybe count to 1002 and go. But Michael A. Taylor's definitely had his adventures on the bases this year. That went 1634. Could take the bet out of Bryce Harper's hands later in the inning. Michael A. stole third base with two outs in Cincinnati on Sunday in the eighth inning. Fortunately, made it. That's bullpen busy with Blake Trinan. Three and one. And lefty Dan Jennings for the White Sox. A bullpen that features Zach Duke and Matt Perk. So a base hit a pickoff and now Ben Revere walks Matt Latos that's his fourth walk of the night 
Our next five, two more here in Chicago. Max Scherzer tomorrow night, Geo on Thursday. Phillies are in for three. Make a note of the starting time, noon on Saturday. WUSA 9 with us for two of those three games. Then the Cubbies on the homestand. Max has made 23 starts against the White Sox. He's 12 and 6. Max is used to pitching in the American League. You know, in my experiences with Dusty Baker as a manager, he gives pretty much everybody the green light. And if you show him as a base runner that you don't know when to go or you start getting thrown out, he'll take that green light away from you. He loves his base runners to be aggressive. And he doesn't take it away when you get thrown out once or twice. You have to really earn him coming up to you in the clubhouse and say, hey, look for the steal sign. We're not going green light anymore. But he wants you to be confident. He wants you to be aggressive. He'll never say a word to you if you make an aggressive out here or there. But I've seen him do it with players before. He'll, he, he definitely will. And I think Michael A. Taylor just thought he had Matt Latos into some sort of count. That's what happens when you see a guy take off that early. And it was probably because he did too much homework before the game. Two one with one out. Yeah. Revere good lead 2 2 he's going foul by Jason Worth got a good jump got a real good jump but Jason Worth with two strikes had to protect watch the jump by Ben Revere that's a good one Lato's quick to the plate he was flying. You know how you know you're, you're getting close to not having the green light with Dusty Baker and this is from experience. You have the green light but then he has a stop sign. And you start seeing the stop sign every pitch and you know what's coming after that. So for those of you who don't know green light means you have free reign to go on any pitch you want as a base dealer. But if the manager puts on a sign that's the red light you can't go on that pitch. Or sometimes you can't go until he puts the green light back on again, however you want to work it. And you just hate to see a base running mistake when you've kind of got the pitcher on the hook and he's not doing a whole lot to retire guys. I don't know if it was a mistake. It was just over aggressive based on some preparation that he probably thought he knew. What's really bad is if you have the yellow light. Then you don't know where to stop or go. I see the yellow light. I'm stopping. I'm <laughs> going right through that light every time. Until Three. I until I see a flash. Three two with one out. Now Revere because he was moving. Well he thought about going to third right in front of Melky Cabrera but then he put on the brakes. So Latos has not retired a batter yet and he might be done. They've been warming up a left hander Dan Jennings and Harper and Murphy are the next two hitters. But Melky Cabrera can throw and he's very accurate and I think that's why Ben Revere put on the brakes here. It would have been interesting to see if he could have made it to third but I think. Based on 
been knowing a lot about Melky that he's very accurate, gets rid of it quick, and maybe he stumbled a little bit too coming around second. I didn't see that until the last play. I think Jason Moore thought that Ben Revere might have had a chance too. A little stumble, cost him a first to third. Ben Lados has been dismissed after four and a third when he was given a 2 nothing and then a 5-2 lead. So a pitching change brought to you by UPS and the call to the bullpen. Stop by for all your printing, copying, and other business needs because together there's nothing we can't solve. Nets all over the bases here. Bryce Harper career against Dan Jennings four for nine with an RBI left hander takes over and for Jennings it'll be his 20th appearance of the year three years with the Marlins that's where the Nets know him from. A lefty's hitting just 214 against the fastball slider combination fastball average is 90. White Sox bullpen 3.36 ERA sixth in the American League but the numbers are a lot higher lately. So to update the bullpen last 24 games just under five and a half runs on the ERA. Well just rip your heart out as a ball club check out the saves and save opportunities three for nine. Yeah right now there's save guy is right hander David Robertson. Harper to center going back Jackson this ball is off the ground off the wall. Bounces straight up. Revere comes home. Here comes Worth. He scores. And Bryce Harper makes a loud noise in Chicago to put the Nats on top. Did you hear the collective O from the fans as he hit it? You were thinking it was out of here. Check out the pitch sequence. First pitch slider from Jennings. Then slider in the dirt, and you're thinking, okay, here comes the fastball, and he got one. Bryce thought he got it. Stood up, walked out of the box. And Austin Jackson had a beat on this, and the Nats caught a break that this stayed in the ballpark. From where we're sitting, I was wondering, is this going to bounce out? But it hits the top of the fence. That allows Jason Worth to score. You want to slug? We'll slug 6 5 Nats. Harper up to 36 RBIs. Murphy now. And all the runs now, six of those charged to Matt Latos. Murphy against Jennings, career one for six. There's a smile. Something to smile about. 
like it. That bat gets going again. Look out. You know, I say that, Cart, because no one Bryce since day one. When he's having fun playing baseball, that's when he's at his best. And it's not fun not getting hits. It's not fun watching your average go from yeah. 300 plus into the mid 200s. So, but it's the whole chicken or egg thing. It's hard to have fun when you're not getting hits. But if you look at where you are in the standings, you're in first place. So that buys you time to figure out your swing. But when he's having fun off the field, on the field, in the clubhouse, that's when he's at his best, as, you know, a lot of players. And Murphy to short center. Two outs. Robin Ventura going matchups here in the fifth. Look at this. So Jennings gives up the two run double to Bryce Harper. Runs charged to the starter, Matalitos. Yeah, fifth inning. This one being run like a high scoring playoff game right now. That's further into that Chicago bullpen. Wilson Ramos when we bring you back to U.S. Cellular. Is that enough action for you in under five innings? Harper at second. He's driven in two. Two outs. Wilson Ramos against right hander Matt Albers, the side winder, 33 years of age, and he's making his 27th appearance already for the White Sox. And a three pitch guy, fastball slider change, fastball averaging 92 miles an hour. All right, he's hitting 254, lefty's 300. Ramos says, okay, if I set up off the plate and my guy hits the target, will it be a strike? 0 oh, 2. It's a slider that started off and broke. Why not stay out there? And he goes down with that one. Pretty good pitching right there. So the Nats get two runs on two hits. Harper, the big blow.
We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Slugfest here in Chicago. Saturday, June 11th, 12.05 against the Phillies. Note the start time, 12.05 on Saturday. Seniors stroll the bases. Join the racing presidents for a post-game stroll around the bases. Fans 62 and older. To get your seniors stroll the bases ticket, visit nationals.com slash special ticket events. So Joe Ross could have had a chance to get three more outs, maybe be a winner. But after 91 pitches, Dusty Baker will go to Blake Trinan here, bottom of the fifth. And a fastball slider combination, and that's one of those things where you don't know what Dusty knows. You don't know if Joe Ross was sick last night and he didn't tell anybody. I mean, we don't know. Or he just felt like he wanted to get Blake Trinan in the game. Todd Frazier is one of two White Sox hitters having faced Blake. Frazier one for two with a home run against him. As Trina makes his 27th appearance strike one. The other is a certain switch hitting shortstop that the Nats know fairly well sitting in the dugout by the name of Jimmy Rollins. Breaking ball one hopper Anthony Rendon got some momentum with his feet and then he threw it not that greatly Brian Zimmerman picking out that sidearm whip well done by the first baseman one out I just love the backhand pick on a short hop and how Ryan Zimmerman just let this fly watch this be aggressive with it go get it not a problem Ryan has always chosen that route third base first base the aggressiveness defensively trying to now against Melky Cabrera but see that's that pitch right there is, is where Wilson Ramos is a glove guy and he's more comfortable doing that and he's such a big guy back there that he doesn't feel as comfortable going to his knees and using his chest protector but that's a case where you can really hurt yourself on a pitch right at you that you try to glove and you turn your body and you don't use your gear to protect you you're exposed. Trying in great movement on that 97 and he got the call to the outside edge. Drops the slider in. Nissan will track it. Now at 2 2. There's that heavy sinker. Each starter walked four batters tonight. Ross went four. Lados went four and a third. So Blake Trinan becomes the Nats pitcher of record here out of the bullpen fifth inning. High chopper sounded like it hit the plate. There's a chance at first. As it turned out, Cabrera, who gets out of that box well from the left side, beat it easily for a base hit. It's once an outing for Blake Trinan that you see that. Whether it's a right hander or a left hander, it seems like once an outing, a swinging bunt to third, a high chopper off the plate. And it's because of the tremendous sink he has that a lot of guys hit the ball right off the plate. I guarantee you that's the fifth or sixth infield hit that Blake Trinan's given up this year. Yep.
One on one out for Brett Laurie. I mean, that's a strike that Wilson Ramos had to battle a bit. So we got high tops, batting gloves, batting gloves in the back pocket, elbow guard, mouthpiece, and glasses. Got to feel sexy in the batter's box, man. But I think the only thing Cespedes has on, on him is that the fluorescent sleeve and then couple of necklaces you know the the fashionable ones but that elbow guards camouflage it's hard to see nasty 88 Lake Trinan stuff is moving all over the place tonight he's commanding it pretty well two outs yeah four pits see ya nasty slider 88 miles an hour a lot of movement going on there. Big stride by Brett Laurie. Next up, JB Shuck, the DH. Walked with the bases loaded. First inning, struck out in the third. And even when guys think that thing's right down the middle, suddenly it dives on them. Nasty slider working. Oh, two with two outs, and he shows them the heater up. Heat her up back to the slider, you'd think. Here it is. Tell you what, if you look at Shuck from the center field camera, I'm having a Jeremy Giambi flashback moment. From a distance, he's got the same stance, the same frame, and almost the same swing. And if he would have slid, I'd just have a ring right now. New York Mets I have been swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Wow. The Nats could go from a two run, uh, two game lead to three and a half by the end of the night. By the way, Jonathan Nice, ironically, beat them in game one. He beat the lefty, Stephen Matz. Way outside from Trinan. And then in game two, Juan Nicasio beat. Jacob DeGrom, Mark Melanson, 19th save, identical 3 1 scores. Runner on the move, and the ball well hit to left, sending Revere back. Plenty of room for Ben. And so, Nats pitchers have put three straight zeros on the board. Top of the six, Zimmerman straight ahead.
new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Six to five nets. You want to see some good stuff? We're going to show you some Bryce Harper. The way the ball is carrying this ballpark, you're wondering, is this a tater? He thought it was. Smokes it to center field. And Austin Jackson had a beat on it. You're wondering, is he going to do the over the shoulder catch thing? The ball stays in. Jason Ward scores, scores all the way from first. And Bryce Harper having fun with the two RBI double. 36 now on the year. Yeah, keep smiling, Bryce. That's a good sign for the Washington Nationals. Top of the six, Ryan Zimmerman, Anthony Rendon, Danny Espinosa. Zimmerman 0 for 4 career with a walk against right hander Matt Albers. He showed you that video of all the Nat starters release points. This is a guy that you got to find that window, that release point, maybe for a pitch or so, then go to work. Zimmerman to left. Not high enough to leave the yard. This might be a single. He's going to have to stop. Ryan Zimmerman just hit a 345 foot single off the left field wall. Well, he's on one of those tears. He's locked in. Got robbed his last time up by Brett Laurie at second. This time, catch this. Picked up the release point on the first pitch. Second pitch. Hawk Harrelson, who does just the away games now, would have been yelling stretch right there. 111 on the hit speed if it was a white side. Unfortunately, the Nats didn't put it on the board. That ball was killed. Here's Rendon. He's had six total bases tonight. RBI double, two run homer. Strike one. Anthony 0 for 1 career against Albers. That's about hit the Sox 7 5 and lead 6 5. Tell you what, whatever happens in this game, the Nats, the last two ball games in particular, have done a really great job of coming back from a deficit. You know, down five to nothing at Cincinnati, looking to get swept in a series against the Reds. They fight back with 10 unanswered runs and then one win in 10 to 9. And then tonight, same way. There he is, former Nat, Zach Duke. And I think. You know that speaks to the a character of the ball club more than it does ability that you have that desire to keep grinding keep pushing every inning until you figure it out. That might be as good a sign as we've seen all year from this club. Yeah down five nothing Sunday two nothing and five to two tonight. So there's the box score Rendon the double hit guy six total bases three runs batted in. Ryan Zimmerman just rattled the left field wall. Rendon trying to battle his way back in the count. I think I heard something where Robin Ventura used five relief pitchers in one inning on that road trip. Good take two and two. Not afraid to use his bullpen. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Yeah, one of the best pure hitters that ever played college baseball. And then translated that into a very good major league career. He was invisible at third. You look down there and he'd be playing back, and then the pitch would come and be four steps on the grass. And you say, How'd you get how'd you go from there to there? He would do it every time. You look, you peek out of the corner of your eye, saying, Oh, I'm gonna bunt right here. And then you look up and he's four steps on the grass. How'd you get there? I'm invisible. Memorable times with the White Sox and with the Mets.
with the runner on the move. A bounce it is short. That keeps the Nats out of the double play, and then Saladino boots it. E6 is third of the year. Two on, nobody out. Yeah, might have been a little bit of a hurry here. It got a little top spin on the last hop. Sometimes that'll rattle around in your glove. You see that ball pick up speed, it's still spinning in your glove. And if you don't secure it with the bare hand, it can pop right out of there. And that's what happened on the exchange, trying to rush. Instead of thinking one out, he was thinking two before he had one. And that leads to first and second, nobody out. Sure handed shortstop with an error. Yeah, White Sox don't make any many errors. That's her 25th, and Ants have made 22. Each defense leading their league statistically. Although, as FP explained earlier, that doesn't always mean great range, great speed all over the place. They just teams who make the basic plays and then go on from there. Big spot now for Danny Espinosa. Is he bunting? No pitcher on deck. It's Taylor here in the American League ballpark. Danny an RBI grounder to pop up to short. That's why Albers did the inside move right there, not to see if Ryan Zimmerman's stealing, but to see if Danny Espinosa's bunting. Didn't look like Danny made any move with his hands at all. Top of the sixth. Nats on top, 6 5. Crazy game so far. Some guys are more comfortable button for a hit in a sacrifice situation and as a manager you're okay with that. If, if you want to run out of there and you're more comfortable laying it down base hit bunt style than you know squaring around early standing there and maybe freezing up and getting uncomfortable. That's okay. I don't think a manager cares. Just get the job done. Yeah. However you want to do it get it done. Yeah that's the impression I had Danny's feet were on the move there trying to get out of there. So Frazier creeps in again. Might have done that on his own. He's going to pull that one with him, and he just pulled it foul. Skipper doesn't look too happy. Yeah, he saw how Taylor hit the ball last time, even though it was a different pitcher. But it was the right hander, Lados, and he wanted those runners at second and third. Still might happen. But Danny has to protect and swing here. Lori's still in at third. Abreu's still in at first. They're not convinced that Danny Espinosa is swinging away here in an 0-2 count. There's a good look at it. Maybe you do the inside move again if you're Robin Ventura to see if he shows. With Espinosa skipping out of there. Over to third base, Ryan Zimmerman. That's a great read. Ryan Zimmerman does not get enough credit for being a great base runner. He's looking for a ball in the dirt right there. He saw it and he broke immediately. Watch him at the top of the screen. As soon as it's in the dirt, look at the jump. And Deonor Navarro didn't even hustle after that baseball. So great read by Ryan Zimmerman. Now the whole at bat changes for Espinosa. He was bunting with two strikes. He can be swinging here one two. That is one of the most underrated aspects of big league base runners reading balls in dirt and stealing 90 feet. It's not that hard to do if you're looking for it every pitch. That was awesome. One and two the count. Espinosa high chopper foul. So Ryan's had an active night, walked, scored a run. In this inning, single, second on the year, third in the wild pitch. 
And the backhand pick at first too. Has Minoza with quite a take. Well, not evidently to Jim Wolf. It's going to ring him up for a swing. One out. Whoa, whoa, that's a bad call. I thought it was initially. I want to see the replay again because sometimes you get fooled on the replay. Tough first out for Danny Espinosa and the Nats. Michael A. Taylor sees Matt Albers for the first time. And don't sleep on Anthony Rendon at first base either. He's been uh, getting the running thing going lately. To the tune of six out of nine. Pretty big lead too. Taylor takes it to an O. Left-handed hitting Ben Revere on deck. Inside the numbers, Nats have won seven of nine, plus 20 on the runs. Batting average great. A lot of extra base hits. Pitching, strikeout pitching, solid. Well, get a fastball elevated right here and give it a ride. Why not? Three-one count leverage. Make sure it's up so you can drive it and let it rip. That's in the zone, knee high or so. That's a good take. You don't want to swing at that 3 1. It's a ground ball waiting to happen. You're looking for something belt high. Now you don't have the same option here three two you got to swing at it. Taylor the other way Rendon on the move with one out on the full count pitch. By the way the White Sox have only played three interleague games. Took two out of three here against the Mets earlier. That's other road interleague series. The two out of three at Kansas City. Within a walk off. Inning of sweeping that series. Series at New York for the White Sox. Taylor jumps all over a breaking ball. One run is in. Heading for third now, Rendon. He will be waved in, and Michael A. Taylor makes it eight to five, Washington. He got a breaking ball that was sitting up, and he did just what you want him to do with it. Well you're watching Anthony Rendon at first he, he didn't get a good jump so he didn't go he was trying to steal right there and you're wondering is that going to cost the Nats a run Michael A. Taylor with a great at bat he finally gets a pitch up he was hunting that pitch the whole at bat he got it three two but because Melky Cabrera slips right here watch that allows Bob Henley to send Anthony Rendon you play that off the wall you can't send him the fact that he slipped had to run after it allowed Henley to send Rendon with his speed. Great at bat. 
maybe his best at bat of the year right there for Michael A. Taylor. Nicely done. The Nats going through the White Sox bullpen like a nasty cutter right now. It's eight to five. Two for three. RBI's number seven and eight on the year. Kind of night we've been waiting for from Michael. And here's former Nat, Zach Duke, 33 years of age. And for the White Sox this year, 31st appearance already. Five pitch guy. He'll cut the fastball, the slider, curveball change. Two seam fastball, four seam fastball, three quarter release. Ben Revere against Zach Duke, one for two career. They had only four hitters in this inning. And if White Sox must feel like they've been standing out there for a half hour. I think they have. Started with that Zimmerman ringing single off the left field wall. Then the error. One out later, Taylor the big hit. And Revere gets a breaking ball. Duke 19 strikeouts in 19 innings. One to the count with one out. Shortstop Saladino trying to keep Michael A. Taylor close to second base. Nats have scored in four of the last five innings. Liking about this ball club too, besides the resiliency, you know, the ability to come back, is the fact they can beat you in different ways. You know, they can shut you down with the unbelievable Steven Strasburg start and beat you two to one. Or, you know, if you want to slug, they'll slug it. They, they've shown they can do that against a lot of ball clubs. That is foul. That thing had some crazy English on it as. Ben Revere will try to stay in there on that breaking ball. They can move the line, they can hit the home run. 
They play great defense, but on any given night, they can beat you in different ways, and that's the sign of a really, really good baseball team. How are we going to beat you tonight? Are we going to pitch it and catch it, or are we going to slug? However, you want to do this. Revere, that ball behind Taylor, so he goes to third, and Ben Revere beats it out as Saladino couldn't get a handle. First and third, one out. Speed changing some things for the Nats here. But but that's what Dusty Baker's talking about. Ben Revere hitting the ball to the left side on the ground. Anything can happen. When he pulls it, he's out. But look at this. He gets jammed, he fights the whole at bat, and now just a double pump by the shortstop, and he beats it. And he might have beaten it anyways. Watch Ben Revere fly. You hit the ball on the ground to the left side. You're left handed. You have speed. You're going to get infield hits. And if Ben keeps doing that, you're going to watch his average go up in a hurry. They have to give him a hit. They never give an error in a double pump. And if they give him an error, I think it's the wrong call. They give him a hit? All right. That's a good at bat. Ben Revere's had three good at bats tonight, going deep into counts, fighting off with foul pitches, foul balls, fighting off good pitches. That was nice. So here's Jason Worth. <laughs> Worth against Zach Duke career, five for 13. A uh, homer, Jason. four RBIs. Jason will probably ask the umpire, is. Eric Cooper, to move over as soon as they get his attention. Yeah, other side, Eric. Yeah, yeah. over there. You yeah, got Jason it. Right. doesn't like the pitcher's arm coming out of the umpire. One for three with a base hit to left last time. You just don't like the umpire in your eye line, especially when you got they got a guy that drops down like Zach Duke. This one out here first order of business getting Taylor home and grabbing a four run lead. He's a third with one out. Revere. Has a left hander looking right at him as he takes his lead. Three one now. Worth was ready to toss his bat, but it's strike two. Wow, that's generous. Tell you what, Nick Lentz has seen his share of pitches tonight, so <laughs> if he misses one or two, well, I'm sure Jason Worth doesn't feel that way right now, but he got a chance to drive in a run. Revere on the move, breaking ball comes back, and it was ball four anyway. So Jason Worth walks on a close pitch. Revere into second base is loaded for Bryce Harper. And I, I'm kind of counting this up from just White Sox pitchers. Nick Lentz has called right around 140 pitches already. It's crazy. 111 by the Nats, 91 Ross, 20 by Trinan. So here's Bryce Harper who has never faced Zach Duke. Pulled off that breaking ball. 
I mean, you could tell the, the crowd here at U.S. Cellular is into the Bryce Harper at bats. They're oohing and on every swing he takes all night. Yeah, the last time the Nats were here, he was not in the big leagues yet. Stopped his bat, it appeared. When the Nats were here, he was in the process of hitting 318 at Hagerstown and then 256 at Harrisburg. Well, he got a, got a hold of that baby in the inside edge. Inner half, I guess. And the 1 1. Third base Taylor who doubled in two runs. First base Revere went to second on the Jason Worth walk. Still only one out in the inning. Harper the seventh national to bat here in the sixth. He goes to left strokes it nicely. Balls caught by Cabrera. Here comes Taylor scores easily and the Nats lead nine to five. Bryce Harper checks in with RBI number three tonight. Good base running by Michael A. Taylor. That ball looked like he was going to drop. Taylor scrambled back to the bag, was waiting for Melky Cabrera to catch it, and tested his arm. Watch Taylor go back. A lot of guys would wander off right here, but he's thinking if he catches it, I'm going. Cabrera takes a long time to get rid of that kind of double pump. And a sack fly for Bryce Harper. Nice at bat with two strikes against the sidearm lefty. Absolutely. Here's Murphy. Three for five career with a walk against Duke. Great speed at second with Revere. And Daniel Murphy takes 91, and there was no way to go on that. Bases loaded again. Oh, he's feeling it, isn't he? Kind of read his lips right there. He said, I'm okay. He's got to walk it off. So drop down was it a slider that didn't slide. I think so got him right. Behind the knee maybe lower hamstring area. Yeah, He got hit. In Philadelphia last week in the first inning by Adam Morgan. Oh, wow. Kind of the same place Bryce Harper got hit. There's Wilson Ramos one for three against Duke career. Former battery mate and he takes ball one. If you like the net to bat if you've ever used a foam roller and you roll on it on the outside of your leg and you get right down to your knee you know it doesn't feel good so imagine getting hit by a baseball in that same spot where your IT band is on the outside of your knee at 91. That's why I can't do those foam rollers forget that it hurts too much. So that was a fastball, not a slider. My bad. Yeah, it was 91. 1-1 one, one to Ramos. There's a breaking ball low and in. Well, Zach Duke doesn't want to go to three and one on this guy, so let's see what Wilson gets to work with. 44 pitch inning for the White Sox. Started by Albers. Out after four hitters. Ball three. Oh, I just seen it so big. Something caught in his cleat though. He got it out of there. This could be an RBI walk or something really loud.
There's our old friend Matt Perk. One of the most fun interviews FP and I ever did in the booth with a new draft choice. Oh yeah. I forget. Can't remember yesterday. 3 2, and that's way outside. The Nationals now lead 10 to 5. Wilson Rommel's first RBI of the night. That's walk number two by Duke, who walked Worth. And this one has an RBI attached to it. Here's Ryan Zimmerman who started all of this with that amazing shot off the left field wall. Zimmerman six for 17 career against Duke but without an RBI. Go inside the numbers from PNC Bank. 2005 draft. Everybody but Jeff Clement has had a very good big league career. June 7, 2005. Ryan was the number four overall player taken and not long after that he was in the big league. Zach Duke spins up a crazy curveball that strikes him out. So the Nationals add four more runs in the sixth and lead 10-5. Chicago. Let's take a look at our PNC Minor League Insights. When you have insight, you know how to handle your finances with confidence. Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. That's a familiar last name to Nationals fans. Brian Harper, older brother of Bryce, promoted to AAA Syracuse yesterday after posting a 1.50 ERA at AA Harrisburg this season. Immediately put up a scoreless inning at Syracuse. And I talked to Bryce earlier today about his big bro he said he's got a lot of talent he wouldn't have gotten this far if he didn't he's also got that Harper confidence in him as well I asked Bryce what it would mean to him if his brother was able to join the Nationals big league club Brian's still not on the 40 man roster but Bryce said it'd be unbelievable it'd be great for our family just hope he stays healthy and keeps moving on up he's really proud of how his big bro has progressed over the course of his career went to college went about it a little bit differently than Bryce uh, but He's progressed through the Nationals minor league system nicely and uh, Bryce is very proud of him guys. Yeah that's great news. Hopefully see Brian sometime. And we also were warmed by the news today that Steve Lombardozzi has returned to the organization. Yeah. Had played some independent ball and he's been added to the roster at Syracuse. Here's Deanna Navarro. Bottom of the six on the way. What was the time span between Blake Trinan's last pitch of the fifth inning. 
and his first pitch a moment ago you hope he doesn't lose what he had he gave up a, an infield hit chopped off home plate 20 pitches 13 strikes in the fifth I think it was a couple of years three and oh Nearly 100 sets of brothers have played together as teammates in Major League history. I didn't think it'd be that many. That's a strike. The Alus come to mind. The Ripkins, obviously, the Consecos. Hoptons, Boons. Thirty seven minutes between pitches for Blake Trinan. Pedro and Ramon Martinez. These are all off the top of my head by the way. By the way Adam LaRoche and his brother Andy. Yeah. Dave and Steve Sachs. Force brothers. Frank and Joe Torre. So Three two pitch. I think that'd be cool. I think Brian would want to face Bryce right now. The way he's swinging suddenly. Alamars tonight. Alamars right. Trying to get another chopper. Keep it in foul balls. I'll tell you more. Dizzy and Paul Dean Carp. You got to come up with that one. Come on. Yeah. One time uh, they pitched a double header. And Dizzy pitched a two hitter in the first game. Paul pitched a no hitter in the night game. Wow. Said if I would have known he was going to do that I'd have done it. <laughs> That wasn't my fake TV laugh. That was real. That was pretty bogus. No, that was real. I promise. Another oh, chop. Another foul ball. Here comes some more brothers. Oh, Chipper's trying to get his sons back on track here. <laughs> any brothers in the box score? I don't see We've any. We've seen 400 pitches tonight. Give but us a Melky break. Cabrera has had a good night. Two hits, but he hasn't been involved in any scoring for the White Sox. Blake trying to keeps pumping strikes and. Deanna Navarro just keeps sticking his bat out. And that turns into a good A.B. He walks to lead off the sixth. Tyler Saladino. Strikeout, fly ball, problem or two at shortstop. That's in there from Blake Trinan. There's the slider, and Wilson Ramos had to go backhand to try to grab it. Showing two of the Nats four runs earned in that sixth inning. Fastball up and he couldn't get to 95. Marlins are playing interleague tonight. They're at Minnesota. 4 4 ball game, 10th inning up there. Comebacker to Trinan. Looking for Espinosa and looking for a 1 6 3. Two outs, bases empty that, here in the sixth. That was pretty. Great feed by Blake Trinan, right on the money. So he's got the sinker, but he throws the slider and watch the feed. Boom. Throws it right to the bag, leads Espinosa perfectly. Saladino can run. So a nice one six three double play. Look at the big arm from Espinosa coming flying across that bag. Nationals 53rd double play of the year top of the order Adam Eaton.
Now Blake goes three and zero on Eaton, who has walked, been hit by a pitch, and scored two runs. So Blake battles back to three and two here. Well, our producer just said we're just past the top of the hour, thinking, okay, it's nine o'clock here. Mm -mm. But it's ten o'clock here. So thanks for staying up late night with us back home. Three hour game, almost sixth inning. And Trinan goes with the slider and walks him on three and two. Second walk of the inning. That'll bring in Austin Jackson. The Nats have walked six batters tonight. Two plus one man hit by a pitch have scored, and another walk forced in a run. So it's just time to quit giving away free passes here in an AL ballpark. There's Austin Jackson. Two walks, a single, two runs scored. So I have the White Sox with six walks as well. So 12 walks in this baseball game. This is Billy Bean's dream. <laughs> One base percentage is <laughs> skyrocketing. Two one. And guess what? It's a chopper. Espinosa the short way to Murphy. Inning over. White Sox strand their six runner. We are roaring into the seventh inning. RBI guys, all three of them, straight ahead. Yellowwood bringing the lumber and the Nats brought the lumber tonight. But how about Tony two bags slices one down the right field line and then Tony four bags his sixth home run of the year. So Anthony Rendon two for three. He's got good salad going down there in the dugout. 
Swinging the bat well, bringing the lumber. Yeah, fourth time this year the Nats have 10 or more. Here's an old friend drafted by the Nats in the third round of the 2011 amateur draft. It's Matt Perk released in 14, re signed, granted free agency, and the White Sox signed him last November. And the lefty will be making his fifth big league appearance right now. Fastball slider change, fastball 93. Some nasty cut on that baby. Matt Perk now 25, 6'4, 215. Originally drafted by the Rangers, didn't sign with them, went to TCU. Here's another one for Saladino, plays it well. One out, seventh inning. Here's Danny Espinosa, 0 for 3 RBI grounder. I'd like to wish my favorite lady, Debbie Carpenter, a happy birthday watching back home. She just threatened to have another birthday before this game's over. Espinosa to center, kind of got it off the end of the bat. Jackson ends up coming in for it. Two outs and with Michael A. Taylor. How about some Geico highlights? How about some Geico highlights? Michael A. making an A-plus play in left center field. And we thought that might be a momentum change. Turns out it was. Kind of got the Nats back on track. Then how about some damage at the plate? Great at bat. Got a 3-2 slider. Rolled his wrist for an RBI double. So Michael A. Taylor having a good night and happy birthday Mrs. C. On her behalf thank you. But she's still up watching this one. <laughs> well she's currently in the central. Time oh that's zone. right that's right. So she's all right. She Those of you on the East Coast don't dare desert us. No. Baseball. I mean yesterday was an off day we're making up for it. Where else would you rather be. I mean we kind of weird this late at night so you got to. Stay tuned. Oh, that's a good hack. Swinging it tonight. Well, good for Matt Perk. He's made it to the big leagues. Hope he has a nice career here with the White Sox. Got him looking inside edge. One, two, three, go the Nats for the second time tonight. Hadn't happened since the third inning.
presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. Beautiful views from the Mass and Drone downtown Chicago. We're going bottom seven Abreu, Frazier, and Cabrera. Third inning of work for Blake Trine in 43 pitches, 25 strikes so far. That was a seven pitch, six strike. Seventh inning for Matt Perk. Strike one, Trine in to Abreu. One for two. RBI single sack fly line out to Rendon probably the hardest hit ball of the three. And that one stays outside two and one. Well, the Nats can take this first one. They've got Scherzer and Geo going the next two. Wrapping up a long road trip. And then the Phil's in for three. The Cubs in for three next week. Make another long count. It's one of those nights when nothing's coming easy for pitchers. Outside edge. Mercedes Benz, not so fast, my friend. Little run back to this two seamer. Clearly in the box. No question. Nick Lentz may be getting his one year pin by the end of this one tonight. Inside out to the right side, and Murphy was playing so far up the middle. He couldn't get to it and Jose Abreu is two for three. Well if the White Sox are going to compete in the central they definitely need this guy to heat up and he has. It's four good at bats tonight on my scorecard. Yeah in his last four games now seven for fifteen. And he's hitting around three twenty now for his last twelve ball games. Todd Frazier one for three two run homer straight away center back in the second inning but that time it was looking like a rough evening look out folks for he didn't get cheated it was interesting as soon as the White Sox made the last out of the bottom of the sixth a couple thousand people turned and headed up the aisles I myself would at least stick around to watch this guy bat again. Not me. I'd be downtown, baby. <laughs> Some of them are. <laughs> I'd be on Rush Street right now. Now you got a good point. You got to watch this guy here. He's one of the good guys. I'll talk about how much he's changed the clubhouse here. A clubhouse that was. Kind of divided in spring training, if you remember. Yeah. The whole Adam LaRoche, Drake LaRoche thing. A lot of the players standing up for Drake saying, you know, he's not a problem. Kenny Williams, the general manager, saying, hey, you know, you got to tone it down a little bit. I don't think that was the general consensus in the clubhouse. And from experience, we know that Drake LaRoche was nothing but. An A number one kid in the Nats clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved him. You know, and it's kind of an unusual thing because Adam was of the age. He, he just had older kids than a lot of the other players. And uh, you know, you don't see little bitty kids hanging around the clubhouse, but when they get to a certain age, it's a cool, 
dad son thing. It is. And it's not like every workplace when people say, well, I can't bring my kid to work. Well, you know, you don't play a kid's game for a living and get to run around on grass every day at work either. It's, it's just a different deal. It's the way it goes. Everybody brings their kids to the clubhouse. Well, Adam and Jen and their wonderful family, though, they'll, they'll be just fine. We miss him. We missed him when he left our ball club. And, and Dusty Baker in San Francisco loved having kids around. We talk about it all the time, kids on the bench. Kids in the clubhouse. Kids on the bench during the game. Darren Baker, you remember him running out and JT Snow grabbing him at home plate. So it's just the father son thing. And it's always been that way. It's not a big deal when you're winning, it's a big deal when you're losing. And the White Sox were well under 500 last year. Blake Trinan has had lots of long counts in his two plus innings of work. Slider. Two on nobody out. He's walked three batters in the last two innings. With more on the Nats bullpen here's Dan. Bob, the Nats might have to make a roster move sometime soon involving their bullpen. Matt Belisle has been on the DL since late April with a calf injury. He's been rehabbing the last few weeks and has been progressing nicely. He's nearing the end of that rehab stint, and it was Sammy Solis that got called up to take Belisle's place on the roster and in the bullpen. Sammy Solis has pitched incredibly well, including those three big innings on Sunday in the finale at Cincinnati. So it'll be really interesting to see what the Nationals do with Belisle with their bullpen. Dusty Baker did acknowledge they're getting pretty close to having to make a decision one way or another. Yes, yeah, Sammy Solis sporting a 159 ERA. And he was outstanding on Sunday in Cincinnati. Yeah, and a manager has no problem when you're up by five if you give up a couple hits. But if you're up by five in a hitter's ballpark and you start walking, guys, you just pound the strike zone, use your defense, be really aggressive, and be in attack mode. And if he has to come get you because you're giving up some hits, so what? But if you start walking guys up by five, there's no defense for that. And that'll get a manager's attention more than anything. the talent all the velocity all the movement in the world that you could want from a young pitcher got to find a way to harness all that Cabrera two for three tonight out to center not hit that hard here comes Taylor on the run one out it's in the air for more than two seconds he's got a chance to go get it. Big out Brett Laurie is next he's 0 for 3. Another good jump by. Michael Taylor. Nice play. I'm telling you it's, it's tough to make good plays when you're on your heels on defense. And I feel like both ball clubs have had a lot of opportunity to do just that be on their heels. I don't think. Brett Lowry's walking though. He's proved tonight he wants to swing at everything. Yeah, I'm looking at the stats. He's walked 24 times this year, and I'm wondering how. This ball kind of in no man's land if Zimmerman can run it down. Ryan Zimmerman with a big time pick. Wow. You throw it to second to freeze the trail runner as Jose Abreu goes to third. And Ryan Zimmerman making one of his best ever plays on a fly ball as a first baseman. Well, he played here one time, and last time he was here, he's playing third. So now first in a ballpark that he's never played first in. Watch this effort. The jump, the leap at the last second. 
kind of a little peek to find out where he's at. I think he jumped because he thought the fence might be approaching, but what a play by Ryan Zimmerman. Anthony Rendon saying get it in. Abreu to third, but it's in some great plays here tonight. Over the shoulder on the run fence approaching in a ballpark you never played first in. How about that. Yeah Todd Frazier probably said come on man. <laughs> Ryan smiling. I don't know what Mike Maddox said to Blake Trinan. He got two quick outs after the pitching coach visit. Trying to get J.B. Shuck here. Two and two thirds. 20 pitches first inning, 23 his second inning. And about the same here. Trying to put a close to the seventh. Ground ball, it's right to Daniel Murphy. Mike Maddox, the words of the night for a scuffling and now successful Blake Trinan. With two in the second, two in the fourth, two in the fifth, four in the sixth. It's been a slugfest. There's Jason Worth. He's ready. Phillies are coming to town. Nats Park, June 10th through the 12th. Fun filled weekend series. We can't wait to get home. 80s night on Friday. That'll be fun. Seniors stroll the bases on Saturday. Kids poster presented by the Peanuts on Sunday. Visit nationals.com slash tickets today. We cannot wait to get home. My suitcase really does not smell well. I mean, it's bad. We got to get there soon. We may need a separate airplane to yeah, fly that home. Not good. Top of the eighth. Here's Ben Revere against Matt Perk. Ball one. Ben tonight on base three times. One for two. Two walks. Two runs. Last inning, seven pitches, six strikes. Getting Rendon, Espinosa, and Taylor in order.
First career strikeout for Perk was Alex Gordon of the Royals. Made his major league debut May 20th against them, inning in the third scoreless. Three two to Revere. And Ben strikes out on a pitch low. Foul tip held on by Navarro. Second strikeout for Perk. Oh, lots of money here tonight. For every Nationals Walk Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes 50 bucks to support Girls on the Run DC. The Nats have 1 million walks tonight for a total of a lot of money. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. I heard if the announcer gives the wrong total, he has to make up the difference. <laughs> well, that ain't happening. Strike one to Jason Worth. Strike two. Worth one for three tonight on base twice. Nats facing James Shields tomorrow night. Always interesting to go on the road in the AL and see who the manager might choose as his DH. Worth levels off and hits that ball beautifully into the right field corner. How about that for an 0 2 swing? Jason Worth on base for the third straight time and a two for four night. Well, he just seems more relaxed at the plate, letting the ball travel, taking it out of the catcher's glove. That's when he's at his best. He's seeing a lot of pitches every at bat. This time in an 0 2 count, forced to protect the outside. How about that plate coverage by Jason Worth? Nice at bat again. Runner at second, one out, Harper. So a couple of former Nets high draft choices facing each other here. Harper to the right side. That ball was ripped. Laurie got behind it. Two outs. Worth to third. You would think Shields tomorrow night's going to be on his A game after the worst start of his career last time out against Seattle. And now with a new ball club, probably wants to show off a little bit, show they made a good trade. So be interesting here tomorrow night. Yeah. Especially with Max Scherzer on the other side. Yeah. Great matchup. Murphy tonight 0 for 2, a walk, a steal, a run, and hit by a pitch. He's been good against lefties this year. 351 coming in. Eighty one on the curveball by Matt Perk, a strike. Shields allowed 10 runs on eight hits his last start against Seattle. Four walks, one strikeout. That was a career high for him, so. If you missed it earlier, I mentioned that Max has started 23 games in his career against the White Sox. Same division for a long time. 2.54 ERA, 12 and 6 record with a complete game. He didn't throw many complete games. With the Tigers, he's thrown a bunch since coming over to our ball club and our league. Swing and a miss, Murphy in the dirt. That'd be thrown out by Navarro. Or will he? Was Murphy out of the baseline when the throw hit him? He was, but I don't think. I'll tell you, Deonor Navarro's had an interesting night. He finally got the ball out of his mitt. And Dusty's wondering why that call was made. Well, Navarro slipped, and that's where it got weird. Murphy was wide, but it was because of the swing. So he was where that white line is. And Dusty Baker's saying, you know, he's establishing his own baseline. If you start and you're going at a straight angle. You see Navarro slip, and it looks like Murphy was a little bit wide there. On a base hit, you can go out there, but evidently on a strikeout, you cannot.
The Nets strike out an opposing batter. It's thirty seven dollars has been for years now and that money goes to the children's into the National Institutes of Health and that's thanks to the Washington area Toyota dealers and Toyota case for kids strike them out. Here's Oliver Perez third Nets pitcher of the night. And this will be his twenty third appearance. Fifteen innings eighteen strikeouts. First up Deonor Navarro. Who's two for six career against him. Challenge fastball fouled straight back. Analyst almost jumped out of the booth trying to get that one. Still ready. We're getting one this series. I'm calling it. Have to be a left hander though. That's what I was thinking. We're a little yeah. offset to the third base side. Yeah, we can't. There's no way a right hander foul one right here. We are to the left of that camera. That piece about six feet from that camera. I'm maybe ten feet away. So it'll have to be a lefty. This one into center for Michael A. Taylor. Five outs to get to nail down game one. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. And more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to At Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. That's at the knees a strike to Tyler Saladino. I always like getting more because it just could be anything. Right? It's, it's, so it's a standard marketing go to it slogan is. and more. It's so vague and more. More what? I don't know. More. Just more. Because more is better. I love it. Like hits and runs. And walks. More innings. 10 10 0 Nets. 5 6 1 Sox. 10 5 ball game. Bottom of the eighth here. Saladino, then Adam Eaton, their leadoff man. And more. No, it's going to be a 1 2 3. I mean, it just sounds good. I just want to say that. Out of play, right side. And more. What do you got on Johnny Depp right there? It's a good call. Huh? Saladino. Three two pitch with one out. Swing and a miss. That was 93 tailing outside to the right handed batter. Tomorrow night Max Scherzer takes the mound for the Nats. As mentioned tons of experience against the Shy Sox. It's eight o'clock game a 10 first pitch. James Shields with the Padres two and seven with a 421 ERA. And he'll be looking for his 130th career win. 7:30, Johnny and Ray Nats extra Masson two tomorrow night. Top of the order, Adam Eaton now facing Perez for the first time, and he lines it right at Ben Revere to the ninth. Not sure we would say that before 11 o'clock. It's all Nats. 10-5.
Baseball on Masson brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years, federally insured by NCUA. And by Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off. Beautiful view of Chicago. There's our hotel right there. Down toward the loop from Lake Michigan. See it? Right the Masson Yacht cruising the placid waters on a cool Tuesday evening, early June. Matt Perk out for a third inning of work. Ramos, Zimmerman, Rendon, top of the ninth. And a couple of Nats fans here are calling Wilson Ramos. Another good night. One for three. Base hit, run. RBI walk, and he's driven in 32. Wilson is 13 for his last 26. Get Revere going like he has started to show and then Bryce all he's got to do is be Bryce. And then who do you pitch to in this lineup. I, I think Ben Revere's had one of his better nights as a national tonight. He's been three two pretty much every at bat. He's got a hit and a walk a couple of walks. But even more important than that he's seeing pitches he looks relaxed he's going deep into counts that's such a good sign for a leadoff guy for any leadoff guy. Taking all the way on three and oh. Yusmero Petit. Evidently for the ninth. Oliver Perez just had an 11 pitch six strike eighth inning. Having fun. Yeah, Bryce three RBIs tonight. Ramos to short on the hop Saladino on the run. Bit of a stretch by Abreu. One out here in the ninth. When this one's over Johnny and Ray have a lot to talk about. It's our Nats extra postgame show presented by W. B. Mason. Nats trying to go six and four all time against the Sox. And Zimmerman chops one. The Nats are in line for their 20th road win tonight. That'd be the most of any team in baseball. Now they've played already including tonight 32 games on the road. Run differential outstanding. So 26 home games. 32 road games with two more to go on this trip. Then the Nats come home for six and then they go out for another week and a half. Yeah, my dog runs away from me, thinks I'm a stranger when I come home. It's like, who's this guy? <laughs> Better keep him away from that suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> well, he thinks my socks are food anyway, so what's the difference? Two two to Ryan. Ryan Zimmerman now, ten for his last twenty three. Over nine ball games.
2 2 to the right side sharply for Brett Lurie two down. So Jason Worth as a DH 316 career with a 409 on base percentage and that had to go up. That was before tonight's game with a couple of hits. And he's told me openly that after this contract he wants to go DH in the American League. Got a pretty good start at it right. So he loves it. And that's not an easy thing to love. It's, it, it, yeah. it's hard to get adjusted to that if you don't do it. You feel like you're pinch hitting four or five times a game. But he's good at it obviously the numbers bear that out. Dusty's saying that Daniel Murphy's probably going to DH tomorrow and then Worth again on Thursday. Got it all planned out. So maybe Stephen Drew gets a little action tomorrow. So 3:33 is a DH after tonight. I'm being told. Good take right there by Anthony Rendon that just missed just a little bit high and away. Yeah. It's hard to lay off those borderline ones. Sometimes. Guy in the first row swung at that. <laughs> you should have done the euchre just a bit outside. No I did that one when Matt Chico threw one over oh. the first base dugout <laughs> in Miami years ago. The worst one. That's I've, a pitch I'll never forget. The worst one I've seen was Henry Rodriguez in L.A. To third Rendon's going to have another base hit. Three hit night for Anthony Rendon. Double RBI Homer two RBIs and now a ninth inning single. That'll bring in Danny Espinosa. Danny looking for his first knock of the night. He'll take a one for five right here. RBI ground ball back in the second. That was the Nats first run a second run right after the Rendon double. They would get back to five to four on the Rendon two run shot to left in the fourth. Take the lead in the fifth they've never looked back four in the sixth. So 20 runs in the last two games. On 25 hits. Last 25 games now, Anthony Rendon at 348. His on base percentage, by the way, is getting upwards of 360. Is that good when that's your seventh hitter? That's pretty good. Espinosa rocks one into the left field corner. Rendon approaching third. Cabrera up with it in a hurry, and Danny Espinosa does check in at one for five. That's salvaging a night. I mean, you don't come to the ballpark saying, I want to go one for five. But when you're 0 for 4 and you're staring at 0 for 5 right in the eyes you'll take a 1 for 5 any day. Nicely done by Danny Espinosa fourth double of the year. Number nine guys had a pretty good night too. Taylor two for four single two run double. Oh for five is sleepless even if you win and, and the thing about going over five when you win you have to act happy in the clubhouse even though you're not you're grinding you're, you're thinking about your at bats but if you sulk in the clubhouse after an 0 for five and you win teammates start looking at you like he's selfish so you got to play the role you got to be like yeah good job good job all right but a one for five and one hundred eleven on the hit speed and a double that went two hundred and ninety seven oh, he, he sleeps good tonight now yeah. now he his team won he contributed with an RBI and a double and you sleep good. You don't sleep like a baby like Daniel Murphy does every night but you sleep good. O2 to Taylor. It's good take.
They have the White Sox with 160 pitches coming into this inning. Actually coming into Perks seventh inning. So they're going to throw about a 200 pitches tonight. 190 to 200. Taylor stays alive. Not an easy thing to do on that curveball. On the other side of that curve, if you get two or three hits and you lose, and you're a happy guy in the clubhouse, your teammates notice that too, and you get a reputation as being a happy hit guy, and it's all about yourself. So that's a whole game within the game in the clubhouse. How do you react as a player when you don't get hits and win, or do get hits and lose? And obviously, the best thing is getting hits and winning, because then you can just do whatever you want. But there's a certain way that you carry yourself as a professional baseball player in the clubhouse based on whether you win and whether you lose not on how you did. I see that a lot in the minor leagues because the minor leagues is about you getting your hits and putting up numbers and getting the big leagues. But you see it in the big leagues too. Two balls two strikes Michael A. Taylor trying to. Battle back in this A.B. and do some damage. Swing and a miss. The Nationals put 10 runs on 12 hits on the board tonight. Uh, Ray was going to like that offense again, just like Sunday in Cincinnati. So with three outs to get, Yusmero Petit will get the assignment for Washington. And the right-hander will be on for his 15th appearance. 28 innings, 23 strikeouts, 24 hits, and the opponent's only hitting 233 against Yusmero Petit. For the White Sox, 2 3 4, Jackson, Abreu, and Frazier. Yeah, they'll see fastball, slider, curveball change from Yusmero. Fastball averaging 88. Right down the middle to Austin Jackson, who is 0 for 1 career against the Nats righty. Well, if everything works out here the way it looks, the Nationals will tack a game and a half onto their lead over the Mets tonight. Beaten 3 1 twice in a doubleheader at Pittsburgh. But don't walk the leadoff guy and give that door a little ajar. 
So it's three and two now. Down two nothing, down five two. Three and two again. Austin Jackson in definite swing mode here. Leading off the bottom of the ninth. White Sox about to drop to 13 and 13 at home. And overall they would be 29 and 29 with Jose Abreu waiting. 3-2 pitch here. Hit hard. Base hit left field. Fourth time on base for Austin Jackson. They would have to get three runners aboard to make this a safe situation. Jose Abreu is next. Oh for one career with a strikeout. Against Petit. Big time breaking ball is swinging a wide miss. And a good stop by Wilson Ramos too. If you're thinking about a ground ball double play. Oh two. Went down there again. Happy Wednesday to you back home. Yeah. We're still in yesterday and you're in tomorrow. How about that? And a fly ball near the line. Ben Revere drifting for it. He's got it. Shows you how strong Abreu is. He just reached out and barely got that one. Carried about 310 into the left field corner for the first out here in the ninth inning. Next up is Todd Frazier. Frazier, two for five career with an RBI against Jismero Petit, and tonight he's one for three. Two run homer and a base on balls. Really enjoy watching his Merrill Petit pitch. He's a guy that 
just comes in and throws strikes. Regardless if he gets hit around a little bit every now and then, he, he's not afraid to challenge hitters and throw strikes and work quick. And that ball by Wilson Ramos, it'll be a wild pitch and a breaking ball well outside. Run out to the mound and go over the signs with the runner on second real quick. Andy Espinosa checking too. Back in the strike zone, three and two. Wilson Ramos getting time. and he walked him on a pitch inside. <laughs> Nationals might have to get their closer up here. Melky Cabrera first time career against Petit. There he is. Jonathan Papelbon, a 27 pitch save in Cincinnati on Sunday. Four guys reached, and he got the last three after that. One one just missed looking for that ground ball right here right now. Right in there. At the knees. Chopper right side. Murphy has one play, and that's to Zimmerman for the second out. Rory's been aggressive all night early in the count. We'll see if that continues right here. First time Lori faces Petit. So runners at second and third, two outs. Slider, a good one to the outside edge.
into center Michael A. Taylor. At 11.06 in Chicago. It's over. The Nats win it 10 to 5. And they are 12 games over 500 again. And a three and a half game lead over the New York Mets thanks to a doubleheader sweep by the Pittsburgh Pirates. For FP and Dan, Bob Carpenter, the final. Nats 10, White Sox 5. They out hit him 12 to 7. Tomorrow night, Max Scherzer and James Shields. Nats Extra begins at 7.30. This has been a presentation of Madison. Johnny and Ray coming right up and from Chicago. See you later.